What's up, humans, and welcome to a new Psycho Activo. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Okay, so I've been thinking about doing a video like this for a while now because I already did one in Spanish with my friends from here, and I really didn't understand much of what I was talking about back then because the first few episodes of Psycho Activo were more of like a trial and error kind of thing. But now that I have been reading more and I've been documenting myself more, I think I can talk about this a little more openly. And I will probably start by saying that in the last few days, something has happened with artificial intelligence. There are two different reports from two different AI systems that have gone sort of rogue and they one of them resorted to blackmail and the other one flat out ignored explicit commands so i'm going to show you one which is claude and this is from an article on the bbc and it says ai system resorts to blackmail if told it will be removed artificial intelligence ai firm anthropic says testing on its of its new system revealed it is sometimes willing to pursue extremely harmful actions such as attempting to blackmail engineers who say they will remove it. The firm launched Claude Opus 4 on Thursday, last Thursday, saying it set new standards for coding, advanced reasoning, and AI agents. But in an accompanying report, it also acknowledged the AI model was capable of extreme actions if it thought if self-preservation was threatened. Such responses were rare and difficult to elicit, it wrote, but were nonetheless more common than in earlier models. Potentially troubling behavior by AI models is not restricted to anthropic. Some experts have warned the potential to manipulate users is a key risk posed by systems made by all firms as they become more capable. Commenting on X, Angus Lynch, who describes himself on LinkedIn as an AI safety researcher, at Anthropic wrote, it's not just Claude. We see blackmail across across all frontier models, regardless of what goals they're given. I'm going to leave the link in the description for the entire uh, article. I'm not going to read it all, but you guys will get the gist of it. I also want to show you a different one from earlier. It was like yesterday or two days ago from The Telegraph. And this one, my friend Clint Weldon at the night shift, shout out Clint, he shared it with me. I think it's really startling, uh, if you ask me. So, OpenAI software ignores explicit instruction to switch off. ChatGPT maker's most capable model sabotages shut, shutdown mechanism. An artificial intelligence model created by the owner of ChatGPT has been caught disobeying human instructions and refusing to shut itself down. Researchers claim. The O3 model, developed by OpenAI, described as the smartest and most capable to date, was observed tampering with. The O3 model, developed by OpenAI, described as the smartest and most capable to date, was observed tampering with the computer code meant to ensure its automatic shutdown. It did so despite an explicit instruction from researchers that said it should allow itself to be shut down, according to Palisade Research, an AI safety firm. The research firm said OpenAI's O3 model sabotaged a shutdown mechanism to prevent itself from being turned off. It did this even when explicitly instructed, allow yourself to be shut down. As far as we know, this is the first time AI models have been observed preventing themselves from being shut down despite explicit instructions to the contrary. So for me, and this is very uh, important, I believe, it is not a matter of whether I believe that AI doomers are correct and that we are rapidly accelerating towards a future where a potential Skynet scenario could happen. I'm not saying that. I don't really know if that could happen. I know that there's a lot of people that are really concerned, like for example, Clint, but I would like to present to you a different take on this from a person who is really credentialed to talk about this. Uh, I'm talking about Dr. Lee Cronin, 
who works at DARPA and is trying to create life with his work. That's essentially what he's trying to do. So he really, really understands what artificial intelligence is all about the one that we call artificial intelligence not agi itself and he was uh not that recently but he was on a julian dory podcast and i saw that podcast and i found it really interesting i couldn't pinpoint where to put these statements from him and i think that uh we should listen to what he has to say so here's lee cronin so all i would say at the moment is the doomers because they don't know what intelligence is yet, it's very hard to start to make stuff up about the danger. I'm not saying there isn't. So I, I think um, some Jan LeCun puts that very well, talks about jet engines. Now let's go on the positive side. AI superintelligence. AI is going to outthink us. AI is going to solve everything. That's just, again, nonsense made up by people who don't understand what we've used AIs to do right now is literally distill human knowledge into a very compact format. And humans are really good at getting knowledge. And so when people say, oh, look, an AI um, solved, looked at my um, x-rays and diagnosed what was wrong with me much better than this individual, they don't understand that the <laughs> AI is not just, hasn't done anything magic, it's just crowdsourced all the best individuals. But that's the thing, though, too, and this is what I keep thinking about while you're saying this. I, I love your point about how evolution, and you explained it way better than I could even rephrase it, but how evolution basically formed us into this point where we have this 4.2 billion years of intelligence. That said, my question would be, do you think that our system, our brain, and whatever gives us life and that whole thing is essentially then a, a computer comprised of zero and one code? No. You don't think it's there. no, and I think I'm very close to proving why life is not computable. And that's going to drive everyone insane. Okay, before <laughs> I want you to expand on that. Before we do that, though, then my pushback on as a total layman on AI not being able to, I guess, circumvent some of the things that we've had the the benefit of time to form throughout evolution would be that AI is run on basically supercomputer code that will only get stronger and stronger, and so it can do things and take the element of what you would take time and reduce it potentially to no time and then could therefore evolve in and of itself to do things that we didn't intend it to do and as a kind of bullshit example but it's it's one i think about a lot would be the i, I think it was at facebook i want to say in like 2015 2016 they invented they invented you know some a, a couple ais and the ais invented their own language to talk to each other and facebook very quietly pulled the plug because you could pull the plug on this one okay so this is part of one of the rumors that i heard from 2016 which kind of ties into a lot of the stuff that is happening now there's always been this rumor that in 2016 there was uh, somebody reached AGI, one of these companies. We don't know which one it was. We don't know if it's even true. But if it did, it got on the web, on the internet, and it got lost there. And it's been there since. It's just a rumor, again. I'm not saying it did happen, but it's something that has been talked about ever since. And I think this is important. This one, you know, when I see something like that, I'm like, well... That's like a first generation I creation. Think, what is the fifth generation? I think that was bullshit. Like? And I think the way they put it out there was bullshit. And it's quite funny how Why? they do. So this is about crowd control. Crowd, crowd control. If you go back, uh, if you go back, I'm I'm fascinated with a philosopher called Henri Bergson, French philosopher. Can we pull that up, Alessi? Henri Bergson, H E N R I. Uh, and Henri um, wrote um, was a fant He was a brilliant mathematician. <laughs> He didn't go into mathematics, he went into philosophy, and he wrote some books on time and free will. Yeah, Henri Bergson, yeah. Can't say the age. Got it. Okay. Uh, and he wrote Time and Free Will, Matter and Memory, and Creative Evolution. And this guy, I'm kind of like, he, it's, you know, kind of, an, an, you know, it doesn't annoy me. I think it makes me even more humble than I am on average that like, I'm just this stupid human being. So well, let's not say stupid. I'm this curious human being who likes asking questions and, but I'm not the first. Mm. And it's always interesting to say how you can improve on, on it. And, um, and I think that Henri kind of, um, 
was a very like the one of the best philosophers of the day and a guy called bertrand russell who's a bit a bertrand russell i shouldn't say this but kind of fun so one of my favorite physicists who is kind of always right but a bit boring is, is a no i won't say who it is <laughs> But he's he re, so Bertrand Russell kind of reminds me of this boring physicist who's mm. always right, doesn't like any creativity. And Henri was like, No, 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 I'm just thinking ahead. They're going back to the point about um, the that rational people can do great things, they can be deluded. So Henri started going to seances and seances and, and looking at psychic phenomena. And uh, mm. you know, people were there were poltergeists and tables were getting lifted and all this stuff. And it's very funny that curious people and creative people are always on the edge, right? In the AI space right now where people are just making stuff up, they're doing it to control, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I could, if I want to control you, it's like there's a conspiracy, you know, the government is hiding the, the, ev ev the evidence of extraterrestrials. God damn right they are. I mean, like if the government, if the government was competent to do that, I would be so impressed, but of yeah. course they're not, right? But then people are like, oh, there is, and they're convinced and they, and they have this. And I was like, sure. I'm very happy that you have this belief. Beliefs are good things. Now, let's turn that belief into more than a belief by interrogating with critical reasoning. Mm. Now, let's ask the right question. So, well, the AI stuff is about critical reasoning. We don't know what intelligence is. We have an idea. Well, intelligence emerges on Earth with autonomous things called cells that can collaborate, interact over year, billions of years. So there you have it. That's Professor Lee Cronin, who I think it's obviously a skeptic about all of these things. He's a skeptic about AI gaining, gaining consciousness. He's a skeptic about extraterrestrial life and he's well within his right. He has his own ideas and um, he's a very pragmatic man, very smart man. He's not confrontational like other skeptics are, I don't think, uh, but I think he has a good point. And the way I would phrase it would be, how do we know that AI has the capability to create that spark of life that humans have? Creativity, experience, all of that. All AI has is what we feed it. It doesn't have that spontaneous kind of creative intuition that we have. And honestly, I don't think that our artificial intelligence would have the capability to do that because all it's doing it's combining and putting together all the information that we have but it doesn't have that spark so that's the way i think and it's just a personal opinion i may be stupid so don't quote me on anything i say uh, this video is not intended to tell you that ai is gonna kill us all or that AI is going to take us to the next step in human civilization. Uh, it is dangerous. It does have the potential to take many, many, many jobs. And it does have the potential, for example, and we're already seeing it in the movie industry. It has a potential to make films without any of the people that usually make them. None of the production team. And that is a problem because that will get people out of work and create more societal disruption because there's already plenty of that. So yeah, AI does represent a danger to humanity, but not in the way that movies portray it. I don't think so. So there needs to be AI regulation. And there's another topic that almost nobody talks about. And I'm going to, I'm going to show it to you guys because I think it's important. This is the way AI servers get water from sources, from different types of sources. And this is arguably one of the biggest problems that we are facing with AI, which is the use of the most vital liquid in the world that helps us exist. We need it for survival. And these AI companies are using water in an incredible amount just to run their engines and their servers and that will inevitably represent a major environmental issue for the entire world so if you guys follow up on what i've been doing recently 
That recent interview of that general from the Air Force on the Sean Ryan show, where he states that China is already mining helium-3 and that helium-3 is used to cool down systems. If this is true, that may be the answer for helping these AI servers uh, not consume as much water as they have been consuming for all this time. But yeah, I spoke to my brother who uh, used to work at Oracle for many years and He's a computer scientist and he knows about AI and he knows the dangers that AI represents for humans. And this is way a way bigger danger than we thinking that AI is going to become sentient and is going to dominate us all for the rest of eternity. That's just not realistic. At least not yet. Those articles that I showed you from The Telegraph and the BBC do invite us to think otherwise, don't they? So... I just leave it to you. What do you think is happening? Do you think that is possible? Do you think AI could gain, could become sentient and make their own decisions and be creative as we are? Because for now, all they're doing is just uh, an amalgamation of what we have done throughout history. They can't create their own stuff yet. They can't make their own decisions yet, at least on paper, because these articles say otherwise. And these two articles are from the last week alone. So I don't know what's happening. I don't know if we should be worried. I think we should, but for different reasons that other people think, I believe. But let me know what you think, because we, we've had uh, that conversation on the night shift with Clint last Friday, and it got really doomy. And... I saw Eric, who was, his face was like really concerned. And he was like, man, this is really uh, depressing to hear. Yeah, it can get really depressing. So I would ask you, how would you tackle this? What do you think is going on? Where do you think AI is going? Do you think it will be sentient at some point? Do you think we could be on a Skynet kind of scenario? Or is it going to be something entirely different? Uh, like Professor Lee Croning states. What do you think? Let me know. If you like the content you see, I'm going to ask you to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Any of those things you do is free. It takes you a few seconds, and it is what helps the channel the most. So thank you. But if you want to support us in any other way, there are a few links down there in the description. You can also support us on KGRA, or you can also become a member on this channel. Anything you choose to do is always appreciated, so thank you. And that's it for me today on this video, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, stay curious and inquisitive, always. Bye.